okay i mean once the revision revision is done then we look at those questions okay because uh, so is more important yeah sorry to interrupt but i couldn't find the mock anywhere um you can you can find it under, under the mock unit mock wish to Needs to refresh the, the refresh the page server. I think so. Yeah, it is okay. just uploaded recently. Ah, okay, okay, okay. Okay, fine. Okay. Are you able to see my screen? No. Yes. Sir. Okay. Fine. Okay. So as I said, we'll discuss this uh, week five. Okay. Let me just start. A... Okay. Yes. Yeah. Nishu. Are, are you ready to start or are you started, sir? Yeah, no, no, no. It's easier like ready to start. Okay. So we just like getting things uh, on ready. Okay. Yeah. So now we'll begin. Okay. So we'll discuss first the week five. Okay. As we know, this week five, it, it's it, it, in, in week five we'll be discussing entirely about this complex vectors and then the 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 different types of matrices with the, with this with this complex numbers. Okay, so sir, first of all, sir, 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 your voice is something like echoing a little bit. What my voice is little bit echoing. echoing. Not really. It's okay, Rohit. Just wait for the connection because I'm hearing it clear. Okay. Okay. Yeah, just uh, make sure that you join from only one device. If you join from two devices, generally this echoing happens. Okay. Okay. All right. So the complex number is like any number which has this imaginary part, right? A plus I B, A plus I B, where where I is the square root of minus one. That is called as complex number. So this complex vector is nothing but this combination of this uh, complex numbers. Okay. Just like we have this real vector. Real vector which consists of real numbers, the complex vector, complex vector can can consist of this complex numbers. Okay, and actually this real numbers is actually a subset of the complex numbers. Okay, so all the all the real numbers can be expressed as this complex number where the b part will be equal to zero. Okay, <laughs> okay, so with this <laughs> with, with the with the complex vectors, one thing you need to be noticing is that. Uh, the inner part or the, or the length of the complex vector, it's not going to be the. We have tried it down here. So for a for a real vector, what do we have? It was that is the length of a vector. The length of vector will be equal to x transpose x right if uh, x is real vector. Okay. But if if uh, let's say like we have a vector c, which is like complex, then you cannot be using the using using x transpose x, because even even though even though the the length of each individual complex number in a complex vector is not zero, but if you use the same formula, the overall length it can be zero. Okay, but the length of a vector can be will be will be equal to zero if and only if all the all the all the elements in it are like zero. Okay. So other than that, the length should not be zero. Okay. If not, then the length should not be zero. So that's why we cannot use the same thing x transpose x for a complex number. It's going to be the length of complex complex vector. It's going to be equal to c star c. Okay. Or, or it's like c conjugate c conjugate transpose multiplied by c. Okay. So this what <coughs> that's that's a, that's the first major important thing you should be noticing. Okay. So that's the length of a length of a, uh, the length square of a complex vector. Okay. So this inner product or the inner product for a complex vector, it's going to be similar to this real vectors, real vectors dot dot. But except except for that, here we'll be doing the conjugate. Okay. So x conjugate transpose phi. This this x conjugate transpose phi that's called as this x star. Okay. 
Yeah. So using this method, we can find this. We can we can find the inner product of any two complex vectors. Okay. So, but if if you if you do the inner product of a vector with itself, then it's going to give you the length. I told you that this C conjugate transpose C. That's nothing but the that's nothing but the inner product of the vector with itself. So, inner product of vector vector with with itself, it's going to give you the length the the length square of that particular vector. Okay. So this <coughs> the the inner product of a vector with itself, it's going to give you the real number. But inner product of of a, of one vector with 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 another vector, it will not be a real number. It will be it will be a complex number. Okay. But since since this is like since this is like similar to dot product, you won't be getting a vector here. That is the inner product of two vectors. You won't be getting a vector, but you will be getting a number. Okay. So it could be it could be a complex number in this particular case. But you know, in, with, the, with respect to the real vectors, you'll always be getting the real number. Okay. So these are just the properties of this. So you could you could just you could just verify this. X dot by it's going to be the y dot x conjugate. Okay. So that's the reason why why uh, actually the modulus of uh, the modulus of x dot by is going to be equal to the modulus of y dot x. Why? Because they they are just the conjugates, right? For the conjugates, the modulus is going to be the same. A plus i b, a minus i b, the length is going to be the same, right? So so okay. First of all, I didn't talk about this. Maybe I just repeat this. The conjugate of a complex number. Let's say I have complex number a a plus i b. Then its conjugate is going to be a minus i b. Okay, a minus i b is going to be the conjugate. Okay. So here, uh, this this you could just alternatively you can just write like uh, if the if the length is like r, okay, the distance from the origin for this particular complex number is r. Then you, if if this is e power i theta, this theta is the angle with, with which it makes with respect to the x-axis, okay. So this this a minus i b it will be r e power minus i theta, okay. The conjugate is the same one where where the angle is like the minus, okay. With respect to the clockwise, okay. Instead of anti-clockwise, if, if the angle is like clockwise, then then that will be the conjugate, okay. And the conjugate of the conjugate, it's going to give you the same number, okay. So basically, the conjugate of a minus i b is a plus i b, and the conjugate of a plus i b is a minus i b, okay. So since since x dot y is equals to y dot x conjugate, okay, we can say that the length of x dot y is equals to length of y dot x, but x dot y is not equals to y dot x. Okay, so using the same thing, you could you could see here since uh, since x dot c y is equals to x conjugate transpose multiplied by c y is going to be equal to c times x dot y. Okay. So x and y are complex, right? Yeah, x x and y are complex. So we are discussing here. We are always be discussing about a complex number, complex number and complex vector. Okay. So he, he even here c is also complex number. Okay, C C here is also not real. All right. So and then we know C X dot Y. It's going to be C X conjugate transpose Y, right? C X conjugate transpose. That's going to give you C conjugate C conjugate of X conjugate transpose Y. Okay, that can be written as sir, C conjugate yeah, X. Yeah, sir, here this C is a complex number, sir. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I told, right? C is C is a complex number. Okay, I thought this is constant actually. Okay. Yeah, it's a constant, but the constant is a complex number. Okay. Yes, sir, can you explain property four seven C X yes, into sir. Y equal to C that C C bar is basically the conjugate one, right? Not the transpose yes, one, right? Conjugate of the complex number. Yeah. Sir, yeah. can you take some yes, example, sir, for this thing, sir, uh, to elaborate? Uh, see, we could we could take the example, but the thing is, it's going to like less than it. Okay. I mean, we we since this is a representation, I won't be able to like. Explain it with respect to the examples. No, okay. sir. No, sir. No need to explain uh, in detail. Just like how it will look like, sir. Uh, the equation, simple thing. Okay. So let's say like uh, we have we have x dot y is equals to something like let's say one plus one plus i. Okay. And then and then I'm going to do something like this. Okay. Two plus i of two plus i x dot y. Okay. So basically, this is C X dot Y. So this this you could write. I mean, this this you could get it get it by 
2 plus psi conjugate multiplied by x dot by okay so this x dot by is going to be this 1 plus psi so ultimately it's going to be 2 plus psi conjugate is going to be 2 minus psi okay it's going to be 2 minus psi multiplied by 1 plus psi okay, and you are going to get uh, 3 3 plus psi i suppose okay 2 minus i square will be, will be equals to 1 and then 2i minus i, yeah, which is going to give you 3 plus i. So, this is what it's going to be, but then let's say like you are doing something like x dot of 2 plus i of y, okay? You, you are doing not dot of x dot of 2 plus i multiplied by y, then it's going to be 2 plus i multiplied by 1 plus i, okay? You won't be having the conjugate over there, then it's going to be equals to what? It's going to be 1 plus 3i, okay? Clear? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. But then, um, okay, this one, you could see here the cx dot c by right, it's going to be equals to mod c of x dot y. Is this true or not? Can someone tell me? Yeah, true. Is that true? I don't think so. Let me tell you. It's, it's mod square also. Yeah, yeah. It's going to be mod c whole square of x dot y. Okay. So using, using, using this property, we'll be getting it as c of x dot y. Using this property, we'll get a c conjugate x dot y. C multiplied by c conjugate, it's going to be mod c whole square. Okay. The length of the particular complex number whole square. It won't be equal to length of the complex number. Okay. So that's the that's that's the important part. Okay. <laughs> This, this we have discussed in a way, the x dot x is going to be the length of the length of the particular complex vector. Okay. So this, this in a way, it's like straightforward. Okay. okay. Now, now with respect to the complex matrices, we just like, just like we have some, some important, important matrices in the... In the sir, in the, sir uh, for that, uh, cx dot cy is equal to, it's like mod of c, the old square, yeah. is it? Yeah, yeah. Then it is true. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Now we have this complex matrices, just like just like we have some in real matrices, there are like some special matrices, right? Like like you have the orthogonal matrix, you have the symmetric mat matrix. Okay. Similarly, here also we'll be having we'll be having similar to that. Okay. Similar to that, but but in the but in the complex complex space. Okay. So a vector is 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 going to be called as homogeneous matrix if phi star is equals to a. Okay, if a star is equals to a, then that's going to be called as homogeneous. It's okay. It's not called homogeneous if a star equals a conjugate norm. Okay. This is not the correct, but a star is actually a star is equals to a conjugate transpose. I mean, this is the definition of a star. But then let's say if a star is equals to a. Then it is a omission matrix. Okay. This is similar for this. Uh, you have your A transpose equals to A, then it's called a symmetric matrix, right? Mm -hmm. Symmetric matrix in the, in the real space. Okay, this is similar to that. Okay. Except that since since here here you have this complex numbers. It's going to be not 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 the A transpose, but a conjugate transpose or a transpose conjugate. Both are same. A conjugate transpose or a transpose conjugate, both are going to be same. Okay. So if if a star is equals to a, if a star is equals to a, then that's going to be called as this Hermitian matrix. Okay. So as we draw this for a star, let's say like okay, let's look at this. If, if A transpose equals to A, then what's the condition? A J I A should be equals to A I J, right? Yes, sir. Correct? So, yeah, yeah. but here, here, let's say like A transpose conjugate should be equals to A here. So what does this say? Here for Hermitian matrix, A J I conjugate should be equals to A I J. Correct? Yes, sir. Okay, so which basically implies, uh, but, but let's say like if, if I equals to J, if i equals to the j then then a i i conjugate should be equals to a i i right a so, i is real yeah yeah so basically this basically implies the diagonal elements 
only for diagonal elements i equal to j i will be equal to j so basically the, for that diagonal elements the actually the, it, it's not a complex number it will be a real number okay so <laughs> sorry so so that's that's one important part okay you, you need to be noticing so the diagonal entries and the diagonal entries of a, of a hermitian matrix it's going to be real okay and then this 3 minus 3 3 plus 3 they should be conjugates as we told a12 should be should be equals to the a21 conjugate or a21 equals to a21 equals to a12 conjugate okay vice versa so here and then and then here in a the 2 and 5 the diagonal elements they are like real so a is a homogeneous matrix but b is not a homogeneous matrix b is not a homogeneous matrix for for two reasons here the diagonal elements are not are not real and even this even aij is not equals to aj conjugate okay i mean a12 is not equals to a21 conjugate c c is also not homogeneous because if, even though this a12 is equals to a21 conjugate but the the diagonal entries they are not real numbers okay so this is this this part is uh, sir yeah so in Hermitian, it, uh, it's a com it's compulsory that diagonal elements will always be real, right? Yes, yes. Okay. And what is the other part which you which, which you said, sir, that the, it should be conjugate? What, what are those elements? Uh, that, so the basic idea is that this is this is the only rule that it should be followed. Okay. A J should be equals A J conjugate should be equals to A I J. This is the this is the only rule. But based on this rule, what we can say is we can say that the for the, the diagonal elements will be will be real, okay? Based on this rule, okay. There is only one. So the diagonal part is clear, sir. The other thing you said now that they should be conjugate to each other. Yeah, yeah. So basically, a two one will be a one to conjugate. This part, okay. So, okay. So the opposite elements, right? A J equals to A I J conjugate. Huh? So that's what I'm saying. In this particular case, b plus 3a is conjugate of 3 plus 3a is conjugate of 3 minus 3a. Okay. So these two elements, the element elements which are not which are not diagonal, diagonal, right? It should be having a conjugate also. Okay, in, in the opposite position. Okay. Clear? Yes, sir. Okay. So yes, the, sir. The, yeah, the other important property of the Hermitian matrix is that the eigenvalues are going to be real. Okay, that's that's what. And then the eigenvectors are going to be orthogonal to each other. Okay, so what do we mean by for? I mean for for two distinct eigenvalues, the eigenvectors are going to be orthogonal. So for if lambda is not equal to lambda j, then the eigenvector corresponding to lambda j and then the eigenvector corresponding to lambda j, they're going to be orthogonal to each other. What do you mean by orthogonal to each other? The inner product of those two vectors, it's going to be equal to zero. Okay? Or the angle between those two vectors, it's, it's equal to 90 degree. All right? Yeah. Okay. So, <clears throat> finding finding the eigenvector, finding, finding the complex eigenvectors, it's going to be similar similar to this, uh, si si similar to how you how you find the eigenvectors with the, with the real vector. Either. Okay? This, it's not going to be anything new here. Okay? But then, one thing, one thing you should be noting down here is that the eigenvector is not unique. Okay, let's say like for this particular lambda i lambda one value. Okay, so let's say I have a I have a vector a. Okay, for this for this I got the lambda. It's it's a Hermitian matrix. Okay. Let's say like this is a Hermitian matrix, and then and then I got lambda one as one, and then lambda two as something like two. Okay, so basically. It's a two cross two matrix, and then and then it got like two eigenvalues. Okay, so for this for this particular lambda one, let's say like I found the I I, I found this eigenvector as one plus i. Okay, so for this it's going to be equals to one minus i. Okay, it's going to be one minus i because one plus i and one minus i they are like they they are actually perpendicular to each other. Okay, the, the inner product of these two will be equal to zero. Okay, so so this this one plus i it's not unique. Okay, these two these two are, are not the, are not the only only eigenvectors. Okay, anything of the form c into one plus i, and then c into one minus i, these are also going to be going to be the eigenvectors for this particular matrix here. 
Okay. So basically, it's span of that vectors. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this C, right? C, C here, here it can be complex number two. Okay. So keep this in mind. All right. Okay, okay, okay. And sir, one more thing, sir. Huh. Can you repeat this part once again? And I have one more question here. Can the eigenvectors, can the eigenvectors be? Uh... One thing, one thing. Okay, for option four, this one plus H is not eigenvector. This is just uh, this, this is just number. So let's say like I have so one plus a one minus a. Okay, one plus a one minus a. That that is one vector. And then this the the one let it be uh, one minus i and then one plus a. Okay, so so this this be the this be second vector. This is the first vector and this second vector. Okay. okay, anything C multiplied by this and then C multiplied by this, it's going to be the eigenvector. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Uh, just like in normal uh, eigenvectors, it can be scaled yeah, up yeah. and down. Yeah. Okay. My question is about when we have eigenvalues. Uh, sometimes in uh, uh, the eigenvalues are the same. Hmm. We get the same eigenvalues for uh, multiple things. Is that possible in Hermitian um, uh, yeah. also? Yeah, yeah obviously. obviously the reason why i ask is if i <clears throat> get two eigenvalues which mm -hmm. are same then mm -hmm. the eigenvectors are going to be same and they are not going to be orthogonal i mean they are not going to be orthogonal right yes 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 they are not going to be orthogonal obviously then how it can't be called a hermitian matrix correct hermitian no, no, no it's, it's still going to be a hermitian matrix so see the only diff, the only property that it should be satisfying is aij should be conjugate of aj okay so, so if, if if that is there for for all the elements, then it's called omission matrix. Okay. All we are saying is mm -hmm. all, sorry, all all that we are saying is that uh, let's say like if if the eigenvalues are not equal, then the then the corresponding eigenvectors are are orthogonal. Okay. Yeah. Only 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 if they are not equal. We are not we are not saying that all the eigenvalues are like this. Okay, are orthogonal if a lambda i and yeah, lambda yeah. l is not equal to lambda j. Okay, got yeah. it, got it. Sorry, I misread that. Got it. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. Sir, I have a question related to this uh, Hermitian matrix and the Egan vectors. Okay. Sir, in the grade assignment 5, we have question number 12 that we have to calculate the Egan vectors. Grade assignment 5, question number 12? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah, what's your question there? Yes, sir. sir we, it is easy to find the eigenvalues, but for me, it is uh, difficult to find the eigenvectors in one shot. Okay, okay. See, yeah, yeah, I agree, agree. So let's say like uh, you, you you found you found one vector, and then the 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 option that could be given is multi, some some C multiplied by the the vector you got. Okay, so it might not be straightforward. So all you need to check is. Let's say like, uh, okay. Let's say. <laughs> so can you, sir? Can, can you just explain that uh, yeah, we yeah. have the lambda and how to find the Egan vectors using that lambda in the okay. complex matrix? No, no, no. See the the Egan values and the Egan vectors. You 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 know to find right. So what I'll tell you is, I'll tell you. Let's say like, let's say like you got an option. Okay, you got some option. Okay. So you you got you got two vectors. Any any of those two vectors are not even the option. I mean, none, none, none of the vectors you got are not there in option. So what that basically means is, you should be multiplying it by C, right? You should be multiplying it by C. How to find the C value, that, that you will check, okay? So let's say like, I got it here. I have here 1 plus I, 1 minus I, right? Okay? No, no sir, sir, yeah. Sir, sir, I understood that, sir. It is the expansion of the vectors. Mm -hmm. But my main question is that, uh, it is difficult for me to find the eigenvectors, not the expansion. Okay, that, okay, okay. Uh, it's difficult for you to, for you to find the, find the eigenvectors. That's your yeah. question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay, okay. So then, what do you have here? We have a minus lambda i hmm. multiplied by this vector x, right? It's going to be equal to zero, correct? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. So you know the lambda. Hmm. You, you know the lambda. You just substitute it. Okay. So what do you get? You, you get a matrix. Right? A minus lambda i. It's going to be some matrix. Multiplied by a vector, correct? Let's say like x1, x2, x3. Okay, assume, assuming a to be 3 plus. Sir, yeah. sir, 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 if we take the example, same example, the uh, lambda, it is 0 and 3 for this 12. Lambda is 0 and 3? Yeah. Okay, okay. So I just tell you, I, I, I just compute it for one of them. 
and I'll share it to you. Sir, it was already present in PPT slide week eight five. Okay, okay. So yeah, then then you should be able to access it. Okay. So the next important thing is this inventory matrices. Okay. The inventory matrices it, it's similar to the orthogonal matrices in the, in the the real space. Okay. Here in the real space, what you have you have Q transpose Q equals to Y. Then then this Q is called as the Orthogonal matrix, matrix, right? In the complex, in the complex space, what do you have? You can't have Q transpose, right? So in place of Q transpose, you have this U star. You have the star here in place of transpose. So if U star U is equal to I, then then that is called as invariant matrix. Okay. So just like uh, just like just like the orthogonal matrix, matrix here here also here also there are going to be some some things. Okay. So the properties of this it preserves the length of the length and length and angle. It, it only preserves the length, okay, not the angle of a vector. It, it preserves it preserves the length of a vector. What that basically means is, if you multiply if you multiply a vector, u let's say like you have vector vector a, okay, you have u a. The length of u a is going to be same as the length of a. Okay, so it's going it's going to preserve preserve the length. Okay, and then the eigenvalues of this of this inner matrix it's going to be the the length of the eigenvalue it's going to be equals to one. Okay, that's that's other part. And the same thing for for two distinct eigenvalues the eigenvectors are going to be orthogonal, just like the Hermitian matrix. Okay, so just because a matrix is inner that does not mean that it is a Hermitian matrix. Okay. So that's how that's how other one. And then let's say like uh, I have a unitary matrix C is equals to C1, C2, C3, C4, and so on, Cn. Okay. So for it to be unitary matrix, the the important thing is that each of the length of the length of the each column, right? Or the length of the vectors, vectors uh, in, in this inner matrix, it's going to be equal to one. That's that's one important thing. And then C i dot C j or the inner group of two complex vectors, it's going to be equal to zero if i not equal to j. So which basically means the the two the two different columns in a inner matrix they are going to be orthogonal to each other. Okay. So only only if these two only if these two conditions exist. Then a then a matrix will be U or or U star U will be equal to zero. Sorry, I alright. Okay. okay. Keep this in mind. Okay. So U star U star means we have done the we have taken the conjugate and we have done the transpose, right? Yes, yes. And U means the matrix as given, correct? What you means the matrix which is yeah 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 the given matrix right yeah, yeah. <laughs> if u star u is equal to y then that is called as inner matrix the important part here is that eigen values right eigen 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 values it should, the eigen values will be equal to one okay the eigen values equal to one you could prove it in this way see we know that for, for eigen value what let's say like uh, let's say like a is eigen 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 vector then u a u a should be equals to lambda i right correct and then what is the i told you that the unit of matrix will preserve the length right so basically modulus of u a will be equals to modulus of u right which will be equals to modulus of lambda i which basically implies mod lambda i equals to one all right so so the eigen values the modulus of the eigen values it's going to be equals to one So, and this is the this is the next most important part. There exists a unitary matrix that diagonalizes a Hermitian matrix. So, what that basically means is, let's say like you have a you have you have a you have a here Hermitian matrix Hermitian matrix. Then then you can find you can find a unitary matrix U such that 
a is equals to lambda lambda q. Okay. Okay. Suppose I'm sorry. It's uh, u lambda u star. Okay. So here 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 this lambda is is, is going to be the diagonal matrix. Okay. So it's going to be unitarily diagonalizable means that. There exists a unitary matrix such that uh, a diagonalized summation matrix. So, in short, in short, it's called as unitarily diagonalizable. Okay, unitarily diagonalizable means you, have, you are going to have you are going to have unitary matrix that's going to diagonalize it. Diagonalize it means that it's going to give it some diagonal matrix. Okay, or or in the other words, you, you are going to get Q star A U, which is going to give you and the, this uh, diagonal matrix. Okay, so that is going to be for the for the Hermitian matrix. Okay, but but any n cross n matrix, any n cross n matrix, if you if you if, you, if the if the matrix is on Hermitian, right? Then then you could get this in the form u a equals to u t u star, where t is not a t t is not a diagonal matrix, but it's upper triangular matrix. Okay, but but if you face a Hermitian matrix, then you are going to get You are going to get this T to be on a non-just upper triangle. It's going to be diagonal itself. Okay, that part is clear. So can you, yeah, so can you come again for this uh, squishy theorem? Okay. So I told you that if we face a H homogeneous matrix, then then you are going to get A equals to U lambda this U star where this lambda is this diagonal matrix, right? Mm -hmm. But let's say like A is not a A is not homogeneous matrix. Okay. Okay. It is not a homogeneous matrix, but but it is it is some enclosure matrix. Mm -hmm. Okay. So then then you are going to get A is equals to U T U star. Okay. Where where T is not a diagonal, it's going to be upper triangle. Okay. Okay. If A is not a Hermitian, then here it is not diagonal, upper triangle matrix. Yeah. 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 Okay. So okay. this this is going to be there, and then. If you face omission, then then that upper triangle that's going to be the diagonal matrix. Okay. okay. So you could you could see an example here. Your A is equals to five seven minus two minus four, right? Here, this uh, this A star A star is not equal to A, or 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 A A is not equal to A transpose. Okay. So this U star A, right? This uh, this U star A, you which not going to give you the diagonal matrix. It's going to give you the upper triangle matrix. Okay. Theo. Okay, sir. Yeah. Okay. Here, here you could see it here. This U star A U. The thing they have done it here. Okay. They got us minus two nine zero three. Okay. T is upper triangle triangular. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So and then, uh, but but for this, but but if the the matrix has been this uh, commission commission, then then you are going to get get this. Uh, Diagonal matrix. Diagonal matrix. Yes. Yeah. So the important part is this diagonalization, this diagonalization of this of this Hermitian matrix, right? This U U it's going to just contain the contain the eigenvectors. Okay. Let's say like uh, you know, in this particular case here, right? A is Hermitian matrix. A equals to U lambda U lambda U star, right? Where where this U U it's going to it's going to contain the eigenvectors. Okay. Eigenvectors of A. Yeah, yeah, eigen vectors are there, and then this lambda it's going to it's going to contain the eigen values of it. Eigen values, yeah, lambda one, lambda two, lambda three. Okay. Okay. So okay, so this this it's going to be not just the eigen vectors, it's going to be unit unit eigen vectors. So the length of the eigen vector should be equal to one. Okay. M means that we have to normalize it. Yeah, yeah, you need to be normalizing it. Okay. So that uh, so that that actually uh, covers this uh, entire big file. Okay. So until the spectral theorem, we have to speak. Sir, sir, one quick question: the matrix T is an upper triangular matrix. So how do we find that? That doesn't consist of the eigenvalues, right? Uh, so so how do we arrive at the matrix T? Uh, see, for, if for the matrix is not uh, Hermitian. Okay, there 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 is there is going to be there is going to be lengthy process for that. So the way you do it is that uh, for this first first for this particular okay. Okay. 
right? say like I'm going to explain it, but then it's not going to be there in the there in the PHP exam. I I just explain it. How do, how do you find it? Okay. So for a particular uh, vector vector is here, right? Okay. So you are going to find an eigenvalue. Okay. Eigenvalue and then the corresponding eigenvector. Okay. You are going to get the corresponding eigenvector. So this eigenvector using this using this eigenvector you you are going to you are going to find this unitary matrix such that let's say like uh, this is a two cross matrix okay this is a two cross matrix and then and then you got this so you got you got you got this you got this eigenvector what do you get it you'll be getting it of uh, you'll be getting one vector right let's say like x1 x2 something okay so using x1 x2 you need to find you need to find another another eigenvector which is like orthogonal to it which is orthogonal to it okay which is orthogonal to it that's easy right that's easy okay so so that can be found once you form once you once you form those two okay so what you can do is you can do this uh, you, can, you can do this u star yeah okay so so if if you, if you, if you do this u star you then then you are going to get you are going to get something like uh, this is this this here 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 you are going to get non zeros okay here here you are going to get zeros and then here you are going to get you are going to get one of the matrix okay in this particular case in, in this particular case here you are going to get just like that's going to be subtract itself because it's a two cross two matrix this is going to be this is going to be non zero okay, let me just uh, here since since this is since this is a two cross two matrix If we just do it, if we just do it one time here, that's going to be sufficient. But let's say like you have three cross three matrix, you have a three cross three matrix, then you can find one eigen value corresponding eigen vector using using one eigen vector. You need to you need to be finding you need to be finding unitary matrix, okay? You need to be finding unitary matrix. So if you do this, you start then then you are going to then you are going to reduce this to two cross two matrix. I mean, the way the way you start a is going to give you this. It's going to give you here. Here, this is going to be. This is equals to. This is going to be equals to non-zero value. Okay, non-zero, not equals zero. Okay, all all, the, all these values it's going to be non-zero, and these are going to be zeros, and this is going to be some two cross two matrix. Okay, sir. This is going to be some two cross two matrix, and using for this two cross two matrix, you need to find the eigen value, and then the eigen vector. Okay, and then the eigen vector. Okay. Oh, so, sir. Using using that eigen vector, you need to find you need to find. I mean, you you need to find the orthogonal to it, and then you need to find again. This let's call as u one, and you need to you need to find again one more u two. Okay, you okay. you need to find, and using this u one u two, you are going to get uh, you 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 are going to get you you are going to get a total total unitary matrix. Okay, so all this while what's going to happen is. This this upper upper values, this upper triangle values, it, it won't be equal zero. Only these values will be, will be, will be becoming zero. Okay. Yeah. So maybe you will be getting the like upper triangle matrix. Okay, right. sir. Yeah, yeah. Thank you so much. So, but I, but it, uh, this upper triangle matrix is not important as per the quiz two, yes. no? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. But but it's always better to know. Yeah. 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 You are right, sir. Okay. So. Until until now we have looked at the okay you we we you were able to we you were able to diagonalize the Hermitian matrix okay you you did diagonalize the Hermitian matrix okay and then and then just like for 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 any matrix for any n cross n matrix you were you were able to I mean you 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 were able to you you did not diagonalize it but then you were able to get an upper triangle matrix okay so but then let's say like uh for for any matrix for any any m cross matrix it need not even be a square matrix okay you can be applying the singular value decomposition okay so the singular value decomposition is this uh, to any 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 matrix a can be represented in this form q1 sigma sigma q2 transpose okay where where q1 will be the eigen values of this eigen 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 vectors are of, of this a a transpose and q2 will be the Eigen vectors of it, a transpose a. Okay. <laughs> so this this q1 and q2 q2 they are they are they are the they are unitary matrices. Okay. And 
and and this and the sigma right sigma it's going to it's going to contain the contain the singular values the singular values are going to be nothing but uh, it's like you have this a transpose right for a transpose whatever what whatever eigen values you have whatever eigen values you have it's like the square root of the lambda the square root of the eigen value for this it's like this is like lambda okay the eigen values for the position lambda then the square root of the lambda that is called as singular singular value okay Okay. This this singular values will go into the will be, will go into the sigma. Okay, sigma sigma is a, is a diagonal matrix where where the diagonal elements will be equal to the singular values. Distinct distinct diagonal matrix. Like square root of the distinct distinct diagonal matrix of A transpose or A transpose A. Okay, it's going to be same. Diagonal is A transpose A transpose A. It's going to be the same. How sir? So how do we decide? Uh... How do we choose whether it's the eigen values of A A transpose or A transpose A? As I told you, the eigen values of A transpose and A transpose A both are going to be same. But the vectors are different. Yeah, the vectors are going to be same. Vectors are going to be different, but the, but the but the singular values that's going to be same. The eigen values it's going to be same. Okay. So if okay. you check a graded assignment question six. For week six. Uh, sorry, question ten in yeah. graded assignment six. For week six. For week six, right? Question ten. For week six, right? Yeah, yeah, same. Okay, okay. In in this case, it is not the same because it's a m cross n matrix. No, no, no. See, the thing is, we are talking about uh, we, we we are talking about non-zero. We, we we are talking about non-zero eigenvalues. Okay, the non-zero eigenvalues, it's going to be the same. We just check it. Can you solve okay. this and show if you don't mind? See, that's going to be lengthy one. Okay. See, but the way you can see it is here, here, here. This, this a is what a is what uh, three, three cross four, right? A is three cross four, right? Three cross four matrix, and then a a transpose, a transpose is going to be three cross three matrix, correct? Yes. Okay, and then A transpose A, it's going to be four matrix. Okay, but then if you look at these options, what you are seeing, you are seeing non-zero singular values. You are just seeing, you are just seeing only two, right? You are just seeing only two, right? What does that say? What does that say? There, 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 there some, some of the eigenvalues are going to be three cross three matrices. Yeah, yeah. So, so, so the the non-zero, the non-zero eigenvalues. Okay, the the, the non-zero eigenvalues. Okay, so it's going to be only two. Okay, so and 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 the um, those two those two non non-zero eigenvalues, the the same you'll be getting for three cross three and then the four cross four. Okay, so you can just check it out. Okay, sure. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so that that concludes this SPD part. Okay, so then we 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 will go on to this week eight. Okay, is that okay? And do you know any questions? Okay, so now what? Week eight. Week eight. Yeah, yeah. We 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 go on to week eight. So is there week seven? Week seven? PC and all? Yeah, the PC and all it will discuss in the tomorrow session. Okay. 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 So now we'll take a short break. We'll take a break for five minutes, and then we'll discuss the key. Okay. Sure. Sure. <clears throat> and the streaming is working, right? The YouTube streaming is working, right? Can you just confirm that? Yes, sir. It's working. Okay. Okay. Thanks. Uh, sir, just a quick question. Uh, only just what could be the difficulty level like for quiz two? It's similar to mock or something like that. And uh, how many questions we can expect? It's going to be similar to the grade assignment. Okay, somewhat. Okay. okay. So and and uh, the number of questions it's going to be fifty. It's going to be like plus or minus fifty plus or minus two. Hmm. Okay. Okay. So it will be less than twenty, I think, now. Yeah, less than twenty, obviously. Yeah. Sir, will there be question from week one to four also, sir? Week one to four could be there. Could be there. Mainly like two questions, two three, two three questions you might be getting. You might be getting. 
Okay. Sir, I have okay. one silly question on week three. Once you come back, I'll ask. Okay. Uh, guys, just uh, one quick question. So, is uh, what will be the like best resources to like have a revision for week five to eight? Like, is it live sessions or like what could be the best resources? I prefer live session actually all the time uh, for the revision things. For uh, sorry, what was the question again? Like, what would be the best resources to revise uh, week five to eight for the quiz two? Best are these revision sessions. Okay. Thanks. And if there is a mock follow-up session, definitely that too. Hmm. I guess one we have tomorrow at 4 p.m. Another. So yeah. That be this PCA wala. Hmm. Yeah, these people are emphasizing on, uh, you know, Halmishian and PCA, right? So they will definitely come tomorrow. <laughs> I am not sure whether this time they are having mock follow-up session or not, because that is not updated in calendar. Yeah, it's not there. Yeah. It's not there, actually. They are supposed yeah. to actually cover with this session only. No, I last mean, time, last time they had such a separate session for mock, you know, mock it was discussion. There, it was there. I think they are telling now, like, like this time also. I think they, we should request if we can have it on Saturday because, because that's very important. That's we have very, very important. Now, yes, yes. Like they generally don't uh, pick uh, like do any sessions uh, one day before exam. So nineteen, they generally don't do. No, no, on Saturday already. we have DVMS revision session. DVMS always conducts you know just one day before exam. <laughs> <laughs> when we have Java session, uh, one session that is uh, Saturday evening actually. Right, right. I think they should have connected to Sunday morning so that would be more great. <laughs> more fresh, more fresh. <laughs> more fresh. <laughs> this tomorrow session is also at a very wrong timing. Like it's very difficult for people like who work. So it's like almost. Can we ask like, them to push it again to the evening? Maybe six o'clock. We should like literally we should. Even I I requested many times uh, in all the sessions. Uh, to I mean to, to conduct the revision session little one week before. Sir, it was back. Week. It was back to back for DBMS and MLM. Yeah, back, back, to back to back. So much clashes are happening. We have to leave the DBMS class, and uh, we are missing uh, many things actually. So it's like uh, same problem. Yeah, because see, anyway, it will be these five, ten people who will attend. Maximum. Yes. Yeah. Maximum are from work guys. Yeah. No, I I only see these folks attending most of the time. It's like. This time there are more people, but usually the sessions are much lesser number. We'll ask what is there in asking. Yeah, right, true. Like today also it was possible because it was an eight. So it's will be okay. But so we, yeah. should, we should also request for mock, you know, mock revision session also, mock follow-up, because that is always very helpful. Hmm. Uh, actually, anyone on random doing MLT also for this semester, whether they are giving more? No, no more in MLT. Not, there won't be any mock for MLT. It was clarified uh, today as well. Okay. Actually, uh, I, ha I have shifted the cities, so I can't attend the quiz one. So I have no idea on attending the MLT quiz two. Any idea on how the difficulty level will be and uh, any guidance on that from anyone? You can refer earlier question papers, like, you know, previous terms question papers. No, but the syllabus, I think, has changed this time around. See, for the past question papers, like, I'm trying to find, like, there is no quiz. Like, what should we look at? Quiz 2. Quiz 2, quiz 2. Quiz 2, I'm looking at the convex set, so pura hai yaar. Matlab, that is so beyond the scope, no? that comes much later. Yeah, so that, that might be no end term, because convex no, and all are part of week 9 and all. It's quiz 2 only. This term, the syllabus has changed for MLF and MLT both, it seems. Okay, uh, so one well, thing is... syllabus has not changed, what they have done, you know, like the content ordering has, has been, changed. Content so has been distributed in two weeks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There has been a, there has been a shuffling of this uh, week's content. Yes. So, this is the quiz two is like heavy, the week four. Previously, whatever you are seeing, week, week five, week six, week seven, week seven, week eight, 
so all all those all those four weeks it's going to be in a three weeks only okay so so that's why the the last term the last term it's going to be the same one but the previous term the previous term the quiz two syllabus which were on on yours it's going to be slightly different they're going to they, they had like more okay they, they had one week extra because as i told your four weeks is they their three weeks content so they had their one more week extra okay but some uh, contents have not been compromised right yeah no, no the content the content has not has not been compromised you had the same content Yes, yes, correct. There is just uh, been this, this uh, there, earlier there used to be a break, you know, that break week, so that has been taken care, that has been removed, right? Which one? I think there used to be week seven. There used to be a break in week seven or week eight, something like that earlier. No, no, we 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 did not have the break, but what happened is uh, we 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 just we just reordered the contents. Okay, that's the only thing. Right? So uh, there is then, then without compromising on content, how have you distributed? Yeah, 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 right? yes, There is there is not not been compromise. So what we have done is like wherever wherever there has been this heavy content, okay, we we reduce it, and then wherever there was this light content, and then okay. there there we added some extra content there, okay. Okay, okay. So there uh, is uh, reordering. That's it. All right. So because sir, when I'm looking at past, like I'm looking at March, March thirty first, October, like March thirty first is the last quiz two uh, paper. When I'm looking at those. They have like convex edge all included, so it's very confusing as to which one to uh, kind of look as a reference and. See, the okay, you could you could look at you could look at any paper. I mean, the you could look at the final term or the issue. And the only thing you should be concentrating is if you just concentrate on the contents that is like relevant to you. Okay. <clears throat> The weeks, the weeks which are like relevant to you, you look at those. If not, you can just tell me. Okay. Okay. So can I ask that silly question I was talking about? Yeah, yeah. I read it. See, I'm uh, uh, every anybody can answer, not just you. See, mm -hmm. when we have this simple least square regression problem, we have this a theta is equal to b, and you can get mm -hmm. theta when by a inverse b, right? Mm -hmm. uh, that is one. But at times we also take A transpose A theta is equal to A transpose B, right? When like, uh, and you multiply both sides, and then you solve for theta, right? When do you do which one? Like uh, when it's not a symmetric matrix or it's an inconsistent system. When do you do which? Because A, if you take the A theta A root, then there's more computation to be done. Uh, uh, any like? Did you get my question, sir? Um, I I I I did not get it in there. So which 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 lecture part lecture part you you are referring to? I am I am referring to uh, three lecture week three three point five. Okay. So let me share the share share the screen. So guys, please don't spam the spam the messages. Okay. Okay. So which one which one you are referring to? You? See, see, uh, okay. Oh, you have a yeah. theta is yeah. equal to b, right? From here, I can get theta saying theta is equal to a inverse b. Okay. Right? Uh -huh. That is. Now, if you come back, come down a little. Uh, come down a little more, sir. Come down a little more. Mm. Come down a little more. Now, okay. Look at now. Look at this. Uh, just go up here. We are now doing it a theta a a transpose a into theta and a transpose b, right? Now here the the answer is clear because a was an inconsistent system. You probably can't take the inverse. Is that the only time when you do it, or if it is uh, not a symmetric matrix also? You are, because you can't get a inverse if it's not a symmetric matrix. Uh, sorry, if it's not a square matrix, right? Uh, When do you use this approach versus when do you use the direct approach? See, which of which one is convenient? You can be using that. Okay, there's there's no there's no issue on that. So here here the thing is that uh, by by doing it this way, by doing it this way, we are actually actually like reduce reduce our or is it the the number of variables which you need to compute? Okay, so initially 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 it was like slightly bigger, right? Okay, so you add here, you add here, you write, you add here minus one one, 
okay one one and then two one here you had you had theta theta i and then this theta double h okay so the equations you have is three and then but the, but the number of unknowns is only two okay so when it is when it's not the square matrix then you can be using this all right hmm. and when it's also uh, uh, income yeah, yeah and, and, and when it's also not like uh, not 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 in those yeah yeah if it's inconsistent also i guess yeah, yeah. okay okay got it mm -hmm. okay, that's all uh, sir quickly quickly just uh, i guess most of us uh, would want to like request on two things uh, first that if tomorrow's session can be shifted to uh, maybe 8 pm at the same this time because most of us i guess are from like working background and second thing was like can we have a revision session for mock separate from for mock the registration for mock, yeah, yeah. We'll like, sir, like, sir, like, sir, last time we had a session for mock follow up also, you know, and that was uh, done, you know, just on Saturday, one day before exam. So, can we yeah, have a we, we will write a CO, okay? We'll write a Pardon? Pardon? We, 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 we'll write a half that, okay? Yeah, we can have it on Saturday, and for tomorrow, what he is requesting that can we have a session from 8 to 10 tomorrow? Yeah, yes, sir, because we are also working, sir. 9 yeah, to 6 sir. is it impossible, Malab, it not possible, oh. it's not a yeah, Four it's hard, it is harder to join the say, live session. Okay, all right, all right. I'll, I'll try to. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll talk to the other other person. Okay, we shall. Okay. okay. Thank you, sir. Uh, it will clash with PDS, but okay, okay. Let's go ahead. I'll choose one of them. But the mock one will be good. Okay. Okay. Sure. Okay. So so now we'll be discussing. So tomorrow session, sir, you will uh, you you will be taking or some other. Yeah, the visual server. Uh, what, sir? Visual, visual, visual. Okay, visual. Yeah, yeah, the other person should direct visual. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah. As a one more question, sir, related yeah. to the this is sigma, the SVD. Mm -hmm. Sir told that the uh, the under root uh, the even values of under root, na you told you told that sigma is the matrix that is the under root value under root of sigma. Sorry, under root of lambda. Yeah, even lambda. values. Yeah. 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 So, sir, uh, in the lecture, sir said that it is the matrix is A transpose A only. Sir, now it mentioned A A transpose. Yeah. So, yeah. So, you could you could just follow that, or, or then or then you could do the C A transpose. As I told, it does not matter. Okay. 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 So you could you could you could just follow follow what the what sir has said. Okay. What the professor has said. No issue. Okay. 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 So if there is no confusion, you can just go with that. No issue. Okay. Okay. Okay, so for this particular optimization problem, I mean, so in this particular week, right, the optimization, what's, what's our goal is that we want to, so we, 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 we want to like minimize, minimize our objective function or, or like minimize, maximize our objective function. So in, in, in any, in any uh, company or like in any situations, right, so what's our goal, we want to, we want to minimize a particular value, right. Particular value, or, or we want to maximize a particular value. In your particular, in your particular case, so let's say like you have an exam on Sunday, right? So this quiz day exam. What will be your goal, and then the how you will be studying? You will be studying with the goal that you want to maximize, maximize your marks, right? Now, 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 your goal will not be to to to, to maximize your understanding. Okay. You obviously, obviously, you will try to understand it. And then you try to get more knowledge, but right now, right now, your goal is to maximize your ma maximize your quiz to score, right? So, so, so that particular the that particular uh, particular function, right? Is what whichever whichever one you want to maximize it or minimize it. That's called as the objective function. Okay. So, and then and then this this x x x are the parameters the the parameter the parameter on which this objective function depends. That you need to be varying. That you need to be varying such that such such that such that you will you'll be able to optimize your objective function. By optimizing, I mean you'll either be able to minimize it or maximize it according to your wish. All right. So generally, generally what happens? There are going to be some constraints, right? So it's not going to be like uh, you you can be choosing any x value. Okay. So you should be choosing x value such that some constraints are like met. All right, so in this particular case, it's like dr, dfx, some, some dr, is less than or equal to zero, some, some inequality constraints will be there, and then you're going to get some equality constraints too. Okay, so we should be choosing, we should be, 
You should, you should be choosing the x value such that, such that it follows this constraint should, okay? So if there are no constraints, then it's called as unconstrained optimization, okay? So you could be choosing any x value, all right? So generally, let's say like you want you want to minimize a function, the way, how do you do it? You, you do the differentiation and then you equate it to zero, right? So whenever, whenever the sub dash fx is equal to zero, it could it could either it could mean two things okay either either you get the maximum value at the particular point or you get the minimum value at the particular point okay so for for you to get the minimum value it should be f double dash of x should be equal should be greater than zero correct okay sir so double derivative it should be greater than zero for minimum second derivative second derivative should be greater than zero okay, okay. so f dash of x uh, if f dash of x equals 0 and f double dash of x is greater than 0, then you are going to get a minimum value. Okay. Okay. Minimum value at x. Keep in mind, this minimum value may not be the global minimum value. Yeah, okay. it, may be, it may be global. Yeah, it, could, it could be the local minimum value. So for you to for you to get the for you to get the global minimum value. What you need to be doing is this 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 f dash of x equals zero, you won't be getting a single solution, right? Like in this particular case, it's a it's a it's a fifth order, right? Here, here, here the order is five. So basically you'll be getting five rules. Okay. So in these five rules, in these five rules, if you if you, if you just if you if you just, if you just substituted in the in the object of function, whichever has the minimum, then that's a global norm. Okay. That is like that is like easy way to easy way to check it. You know, you need to go for the double dash of x. All you just need to do is you just need to substitute these five values. Five values the roots you get in, in this in this particular object to function. Okay. So that's like one way, whichever one has the has the least minimum, then that's called as the global minimum. Okay. For the for the local minimum, it should be like f dash of x should be zero and f double dash of x should be greater than zero. For local maxima, it should be opposite. It should be like f double dash of x should be less than zero. Okay. So the way it is like uh, here, here again it minimum. Sir, when the uh, second derivative is zero, is it inconclusive or is it a saddle point? The second derivative, this one? Yeah, if the second derivative is zero, then is it okay, inconclusive? Okay. Then that's then the saddle point, right? It's at your point, right? It's not that it's inconclusive. What? Then, then, then you need to be looking for the higher derivative. Then, then okay. you need to go f double dash of x. Okay. Okay. No, my question was if that f double dash x is zero, what do we conclude? Is it a saddle point? Yeah, yeah. That's that's a saddle point. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. So, you know, you have your x cube, right? For x cube, what's going to graph? It's going yeah, to yeah. That's a standard. Uh, yeah. this thing. Uh -huh. Correct. Okay, so that's what we, we, we have an object of function which we want to minimize it or maximize it. Okay, so if you if you want to like uh, always always it's not it's not easy to easy, easy to find this derivative and then and then go for it right. So what do you do? <coughs> you 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 can do this iterative process too. In the iterative process, what you do is what you do is you, you just you just assume a point initially. Okay? You you start at some arbitrary point arbitrary x value okay from the x value from that particular x value you want to move in a direction you want you want to move, move in the direction which you where 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 the actual solution is okay in this particular case you want to find a minimum you want to minimize x minus pi whole square okay so for us it's clear that x equals to pi will get the minimum okay and then let's say like you arbitrarily chose 8 okay from 8 you should be moved to the left you should be moved to the left so 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 that you'll be approaching the five. And let's say like you are you you choose arbitrary value as two. Okay, if you choose two, then you should be you should be approaching two right. Alright. So how do you choose this direction? That is the like you you you're at you're at you're at this eight, right? And you should be you should be moving to some other x value. Okay. The the way this iterative iterative process works is you'll be you will be starting with some point. And then through iterations, I mean through through step by step or like through, through iterations, 
will be, be, be moving to another x another x until until you reach a solution okay until you reach a exact solution or, or you will say like approximately okay i'm like this is this fine with me and then you will stop okay so until 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 you approximately reach a solution you will be you will be doing on this iteration okay so the way you move to the the way you move to it is like for this xt you need to be adding something t okay so this d d it should, you, you should move in the good direction okay by good direction i mean towards your actual solution okay so the way the way you get this good direction is if you use this minus f dash f x if you use minus f dash f x when when x is like greater than 5 your your minus f dash f x is going to be less than 0 so so you move in the right direction and if and if your x is like less than 5 then f dash f minus f dash f x is going to be greater than 0 so you will still be moving in the right direction that is you will still you will still be approaching 5 so the good direction to move is minus f dash f x okay so why exactly minus f dash f x we discuss that in a bit okay so the the but the problem with that is let's say like you chose this uh, you started at 10 using this using this xt xt plus 1 equals to xt plus t where t is minus f dash fx you you moved in the right direction but then you moved too much that you added at zero from zero you again added at 10 0 10 0 so you you move towards by but then you move too much and from 10 you 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 move towards by but then you move again too much such that you are actually like oscillating in between the In between your your actual actual optimal value, okay. So it's not just the good direction that matters. It's the amount amount you you move you move in the correct direction that also matters, okay. So the amount you you move also also matters. So if you do not choose the correct amount, then you will not be arriving at the solution, okay. So this to to I mean to to arrive arrive at the actual solution, okay, and not just oscillate it. You'll be choosing a step sets, okay? Eta d, eta d. Obviously, it should be positive because if you choose a negative, then you'll be moving in the wrong direction. You'll be choosing, you'll be moving in bad direction. So this eta d step sets it should be positive, okay? So like if you choose this as like one by two power t, okay? Where t is the number of iterations, that is the first iteration it's going to be one, one by two, one by four, one by eight, and so on. The what's going to happen is you might not even reach it. That's like You you will will be stopping somewhere in between. Okay, so this you should not be reducing it too much. So the other way will be like you could be choosing this one by t plus one. Okay, one by t plus one. Using using one by t plus one, you you are going to you are going to reduce your steps each time, but then you will still be able to reach your actual solution. Okay. So if you choose the steps as one by t plus one. Then that's called as this, that particular that particular iterative process is called as this gradient descent algorithm. Okay, the gradient descent algorithm. All right. Until now, is it clear? Step size one by t plus one. Why we need to choose? Why we why we need to choose a step size? Okay. I hope it's clear. Okay. So if you choose this one by t plus one, then that's called as gradient descent algorithm. Okay. Generally, in the in the in a in a problem, okay, they will be they will be mentioning, I mean, or they will be telling you what the step size will be, okay. So if they tell you one by t plus one, then you choose so if you choose that, if they tell you fixed fixed step size or point or something, you just choose that one, okay. So the way this, as we have as I have told, the the good direction to move is this x t plus one. Is equals to x t plus d, where d is minus f dash f x, right? So x t minus f dash f x. Okay. So you'll be able to you'll be able to update the update this x t plus in value as long as the f dash f x is not zero. But let's say like if the f dash f x is zero, that means that you'll be stopping there, right? That's your end point. Okay. That's your end point. So according to this algorithm, okay, you 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 could be getting f dash f x zero. If the step size is zero here, 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 all all the all these blue colored points, right? All 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 these blue colored points with this with this red color one. Okay, you could be getting you could be getting if the step size is zero. Okay, but the problem is not not always not always whatever you get, they that's not a global minimum. That's just a local minimum. 
Okay. This is not a global minimum, right? So this particular point, x star here, this is a global minimum. Okay. So the problem with this particular gradient descent algorithm is you will converge to local minimum but not the global minimum. Okay. So you cannot be using the gradient descent algorithm for any function, any objective function you cannot use. You should be using it, you should be using it only, only for some for some particular functions where all the local minima gives you global minima. Okay. So all the local minima, it should give you the global minima. Okay. So those particular functions are called as conic functions. Okay. So you can be you can you can be using using your your gradient descent algorithm, it will be it will be very good only for this for, for this for this particular conic functions. Okay. It will not be good for others. Alright. This one is like important. Okay. 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 So uh, the thing about the scalar series is, let's say like uh, let's say you have you have entire information at a particular point. That is, you have you know f of x, f dash of x, f double dash of x, f triple dash of x, and so on. Using that particular information, using that particular information. That is your entire information at a particular point. You can get the global information. That is, you can you can find f of x of any point. Okay, you can find f of x of any point. Okay, so f of x plus eta d equals to f of x plus eta d plus eta square d square by two f double dash of x. This is the Taylor series expansion. Okay, so here the here the evaluations are all at all at x, right? So basically, if you know the entire information at at at, at x. So you can use that to to get this f of x plus eta d. Okay. So basically, basically you can you can find the you can get the function value at any point. Okay. So using this, let's say like if your eta d is small, if your eta d is small, then eta square d square by two will be like very small, and eta cube d cube by three will be like d cube by three will be even small. So you can just be ignoring those terms, the higher order terms. Okay. And uh, Let's say like your your f of x plus eta d equals now what f of x plus eta d f dash of x right and this x plus eta d this x plus eta d will be like will will be will be our 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 x t plus one okay this 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 x is our x t all right so what the how do you want to move we want to minimize a function right so if you want to minimize a function f of x t plus one should be less than f of x t correct. So basically, here f of x plus eta d should be less than should be less than f of x, or or in other words, f of x plus eta d minus f of x should be less than zero. All right. So which basically implies this eta d f dash of x, eta d f dash of x should be less than zero. All right. So eta d f dash of x, so eta d f dash of x should be less than zero. Right. So this eta eta is step size that's the same way positive, okay. and then this d f dash of x should be less than or equal to it can be equal to zero also. Okay. So if it is if, if it is uh, for you to get this d f dash of x should be less than zero, if you are choosing d is equal to minus f dash of x, then what do you get? You get minus f dash of x whole square, right? Minus f dash of x whole square it will it will always be less than or equal to zero, right? So that is the reason why we choose uh, d as the minus f dash of x. Okay. So and then for this, for the for the higher dimensions, right? Where you have like uh, where, where where you don't have single parameter but a vector. Sir, just a doubt, sir. So it means d. We are saying that the first derivative, right? What d d here? Yeah, d yeah d d is basically the negative of first derivative, right? This is obviously obviously the first derivative. Yeah. Okay. First derivative. But actually, what we call like eta is the step size, right? Eta is the step size, correct? So, so what we call d? D what we call like negative of gradient or what we call? Yeah, negative of gradient, right? Okay. Okay. So for higher dimensions, since since you won't be having a derivative, you just be having the gradient here. Okay. The gradient is, is nothing but the partial derivative with respect to the each of the each of the parameters x1, x2, x3, and so on. Okay. In this particular case, we have we have the we have the objective function depending on two parameters x1, x2. Okay. So instead of instead of using the using normal derivative, you use gradient here. Okay. Do by do x1, do by do x2. 
Okay. So, and then the way you update is, so here in this particular case, you, you, do, you don't have one parameter to update. You, have, you should be updating two parameters. Okay. So it's like x1 t plus 1 and then x2 t plus 1. Okay. So it will be equals to x1 t and then x2 t minus gradient f. Okay. Minus eta. Eta will be there obviously. Eta do f by do x1. Do f do x1 t. Okay. And then do f by do x2 t. Okay. So using using this, using this, you'll be you'll be able to update the update for higher dimensions. Alright. Is this clear? It's just the same thing. Okay. It's just the same thing. Instead of the instead of the derivative, you are using the partial derivative. Okay. So if we just write it like <coughs> x1 t plus 1 is equals to x1 minus theta do by do x1 t. Okay. So which kind of this one? Alright. Okay. So can I take some examples, sir, for this thing? For this thing, you want me to discuss the example? Yeah, sir. Okay. You can discuss here itself, right? If we have here x1 square plus 4x2 plus 8x2. x1 square plus 4x1. 4x2 plus 8x2 square. This is our f of x1 comma x2. Okay, I want to minimize it. So let's say like I'll be starting at 1 comma 1. Okay, so my initial my initial initial value is this x1 0 and then this x2 0 is equal to 1 1. Okay. I will choose eta is equal to 1. Okay. So I I, I need to I need to know the know the next iteration value, right? So I need to know the 611 and then this 621. Okay, it will be equals to 1, 1 minus uh, I need to I need to do this partial derivative with respect to this. So do f by do x1, it's going to be equals to 2x1. Okay. Because this x2 and then this x2, x square this will be this will be zero because they do not have the x and values and then do f by do x2 it will be equals to 4 plus 16 x2 okay so now this will be equals to minus 2 x1 4 plus 16 x2 let me just substitute the values x1 is 1 and then x2 is also 1 so which is going to give you 1 1 minus 2 14 plus 16 it's going to give you 20. So this is going to be equals to minus 1 minus 19. Okay. So from this minus 1 minus 19, it will go further. Alright. Clear? Uh, sir, how to interpret this? Does it mean that from 1, 1 now we have moved to minus 1 minus 19? Yeah, yeah. Okay. So this is a new point now, right? Correct. Correct. This this minus 1 minus 19 is, is a new point. From so this so now. So now we are we, we so are inching, is... we are inching towards our global minima, sorry, your local minima, right? Yeah, we we, we are moving towards local minima. Yeah, we, so we sir, will always move towards local minima. So sir, x one uh, x one is minus one and x y two. X so one sir. one is, one, one is minus one, and then x two one is minus nineteen. Okay, 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 okay. Okay. So from this x one one and the next one, you can move further. And so how we calculate the distance? We have this point, okay, from previous to this point. No, it's not going to the distance, right? No, sir. These are new points, now. Minus yeah. one and minus nineteen. Okay, but you just substitute this here. You you are talking about that or what? You you are talking about the distance between this x one x two. This is x one zero and then x two zero and then this x one. Ah, uh -huh. yes, sir, yes, sir, yes, sir. But that does not matter, right? Okay, okay, okay. See, the, our, our goal is to minimize this. Okay, our okay. Goal okay. Is to minimize this. You could see this here, right? See, when you have one 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 one, this this f of x and x two, that will be more. But then if you have here this uh, this this minus one minus one, it will it will be something different. Okay, I this is this, even even this is not a. Even this, this, this is not the correct value, you just need to be still moving forward. 
Okay. Okay, understood. Oh, sir. Okay, okay. Sir, so if 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 the in the question, if they ask that after three iteration, what will the function value? So after three iteration, we will substitute the value in the yeah, function, na? Yeah. Correct. Correct. Okay. Okay. Uh, I have a question here. Eta, we chose it as one. That is only for an example we chose, or uh... yeah, yeah. I, I just chose it as an example. Okay. 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 Okay, so as I have told, uh, for the for the for the for the higher dimensions, we'll just be using this partially already here, the gradient we'll be using, and using the gradient, we'll be updating the values. Okay, so here here they they mentioned this. Okay. Initially, initially they are started from they are starting from they are started from pi comma two. Okay, pi one two. X one has chosen as pi, and then X two has chosen as two, and then using the gradient, they they got this minus seventy minus seventy six. And using that, using that, they can up, they when they have updated it, right? Wait. The gradient value they got as minus seventy, minus seventy six, and then using using that, they can they can update the value. So the updated value will be equals to so it it will be based on based on the eta. Okay, so if the if the, if the eta eta is uh, If the eta is one, then that will be something like minus minus sixty five, and then minus seventy four. Okay. Sorry, sorry, sorry. This is this is this is gradient D, right? So we should be looking at minus gradient D. The minus gradient D will be equal to seventy seventy six. Okay. It's going to be seventy seventy six. So if we just add it to five two, then that's going to be equal to seventy six, and then and then seventy seventy eight. Okay. Yeah. All right. So this seventy and seventy six are the points, now. The yeah. Next yeah, yeah points. The next point. The next point is. Yes. Okay, okay. From five, from five comma two, it will move to seventy comma seventy six. Yes. Yes. Okay. It will move to that point, or it it will move in the direction of that point. No, no, it will move to that point. So see, we 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 do our. What will be the what will be minimum value for this? What will be the x one x two such that you will get the minimum? It will be it's going to be forty comma forty, right? At forty comma forty, you will get the minimum. Am I correct? Forty comma forty, you will get the minimum value, which is zero. Okay, so yeah. from from five comma two, if you move if you move until like seventy seventy five comma seventy eight, that means that you have, you have moved in the correct direction because you moved in the direction of forty comma forty. Okay, from forty comma, I mean, from there, from from seventy, from seventy five and then seventy eight, na, you you will again come backward because forty comma forty is like is 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 like is like lesser than that, right? So right. it's like you move you move in the in the correct direction, but you 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 might not be moving in the exact amount. Okay, so it's not like in the first iteration, say we'll be getting forty comma forty, right? Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So uh, this is this is the same one I have told. This is the way to update it. This xt plus one, xt plus one is this vector, okay? And then this xt xt is this vector minus gradient is this vector, okay? So the same thing they are just they just represented here, okay? And then this one this is just a higher order Taylor series expansion, okay? So this is this is the this is the normal one, right? But for the higher order one, what do you have? F of x plus eta d. Remember, doesn't matter what the value of x is. That is whether whether it is a whether 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 x is a scalar or whether whether x is a vector. F of x, f of x plus eta d. That that's going to be a that's going to be scalar. Okay. So in this particular case, x is a vector. So x plus eta d will be a vector. But f of x will be scalar. Okay. F of x will be scalar. So here, eta d transpose gradient f of x is going to be scalar. D is a vector. Gradient f of x is a vector. But d transpose gradient f of x that's going to be scalar because it's a dot product between two vectors. Okay, so it's going to be same one. It's going to be same one if you move forward. Okay. Um, I have another question here. Yeah. Gradient descent. If we take it only for the first two terms, we get the normal thing. But if we go for higher order terms, is what we're talking about. It's essentially the same thing. Uh, but when do we actually use this higher order Taylor series? <laughs> When when do when do you actually use higher order Taylor series? Correct. 
uh, hyaluronic Taylor series Taylor series is just is just used for for the used for the expansion. Okay, you're talking okay. about gradient descent. The gradient descent. Yeah. You're talking about you you're, you're talking about solving for minimizing minimizing right. So for yeah. minimizing it, what what you're done in the gradient descent, you, you just assume that you just assume the Taylor series to be a like of of uh, of single I mean you just show until lambda is okay. You, you ignore the higher orders. What you, what you essentially saying is, uh, if we, if we, if I do not, if I take, if I take even the double dash fx, and then, and then you want to minimize it. That's your question. Yeah, like if I take double dash also, there will be an influence, but it will be minimal. So, when we are talking about gradient descent, uh, it's just the first derivative that we actually do, and then stop it there. Correct. Yeah, yeah. Actually, uh, so we, we we discussed this. There is this, uh, there is this Newton's method, Newton's method of expansion, where you have to use this, where 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 you use dash of x by f double dash of x. If I'm correct. Okay. Something like this. So so we 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 do we do have this. We do we do have the have have higher order terms too. I mean we do we do have the object, object, iteration methods. Okay. So okay. you in the hybrid too. Okay. So we just did not discuss it here. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And then so the good thing about this is that they'll converge very quickly. Using less iterations, they'll be able to converge very quickly. Uh, so okay. from this Taylor series and the gradient uh, this descent. Mm -hmm. So the question that you explained, this type of question will come, or the question that is in the uh graded assignment of week eight, that will come. Which one you mean? The grade assignment of week eight? Yeah. What questions? Uh, related to the this, na, uh, we have to form an equation. Then we have to. See, yeah. So what what we'll be asking is, okay, I'll tell you the questions that might be asked. Like we'll be asking you to minimize it. Okay. We we, we won't be asking you to do do it in the grade this or like or like any other algorithm. We just ask you to minimize. It. Suppose like minimizing. Uh, what, what, what is the nice amount of volume you can find or volume volume in a square? It's like what is the what is the maximum area of a area yes. of a square square in a circle? Uh -huh. Something like uh, a, a cube, a cube in a sphere, something like that. Something those those kind of problems you can expect. And then the other problem is how do you how do you formulate the objective function? Right? And then how do you how do you know this constraints and all? So we will expect that question, now. Huh? Yeah, yeah, those kind of questions you can expect, and, and even even this iterative iterative process you can expect. Like, what will be the what will, what will be the value of value after after two iterations? Value of the function after two iterations, or what will just be the x value? What will just be the x value after two iterations? Something like that. Okay. X x means function value. No, no, no. X x just means the parameter. X t plus one. That's it. X x x just means the parameter. Parameter, okay, not the not the f of x. Okay, parameter. Okay. Um, I think I have gotten lost a little bit. And can I ask one question on the earlier one on gradient descent and the higher order terms that you are actually showing that slide? Yes. Yeah, yeah. 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 Okay. Not on this one, please. Uh, the other document where uh, the lecture notes where you are showing uh, the higher order terms on. The Taylor series higher order. Yeah. Okay, now this one, right? No, and the lecture notes, please. Okay. Uh, yeah, yeah. Just can you kindly go to that particular? Yes, yes. Um, yeah. Yeah, here we are saying gradient descent it is all vector, vector, scalar, and vector. And here, when it comes to it, uh, we're just mentioning it is a scalar, but on top of it, it is written as it's all scalar. So well, I'm going to get f of x plus eta d as a scalar, right? Not as a vector. No, no, no. f of x plus eta d is a scalar. x plus eta d is a vector. x is a vector. And yeah. D is a vector. x plus eta d is a vector. But f of x plus eta d is a, is a scalar. x okay. is a vector here, but f of x is a scalar. D okay. is a vector. D transpose gradient f of x is a is a, is a scalar again. So you okay. will be adding scalars only. 
Okay. If I go above on the top of the slide, it is the, for the gradient descent, it is written as vector, vector, vector. So I'll be getting output as a vector. Yeah, obviously. This, uh -huh. this is the parameter, right? These are the parameters, right? The parameter, parameter here is a vector, right? So yes, but then, but then the f of the parameter, that is the f of this xt plus one, then that's going to be scalar again. Oh, okay. Uh, I already have a. Okay. See, okay. Right. That is where I'm getting lost. Let me explain this clearly. Mm -hmm. HLI, normally, normally what we have learned, we have learned something like f of x equals to x cube plus uh, 3x square plus 4x, some 4x plus 5, something like that. Okay. So here, okay. here there is only one parameter. Okay. Correct. So Correct. each, each, for each iteration, xt plus 1, xt plus 1 equals to xt, xt plus t. Okay. This, this d is a c minus theta d of minus theta of dash of x. So yeah. here this xt plus 1 also will be scalar. Yeah. Okay. So and then f of xt plus 1. It's going to be scalar. Correct. Okay, but if you're going for higher order numbers, that is, let's say I'm having your x1, x2. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then this going to be something like x1 cube plus 3x2 square plus 4x1 plus five, something like that. Okay. Yeah. Now here, when you're trying to update this value, this xt plus one is equals to xt plus d, okay, this, this x is a vector here, this x is a vector okay. here, okay, mm -hmm. this x is a vector, but again, f of xt plus 1, it's going to be again scalar, okay, clear, because okay. you substitute this x1, xt here, right, you, you substitute yeah, yeah, it here, yeah. right, okay, 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 Leo? Okay, got it, got it, got it, got it, got it. Yeah. If I talk about the x1, y, and z axis, x1, x2 can represent the x and the y axis, and then the third one is where I'm actually seeing my f of x. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Correct. Okay. Uh, so, okay. Yeah. That is the reason. Yeah. The moment x1, x2 are coming, it means we, now we have started dealing with multivariable functions, right? Yes, yes, yes. And those multivariable function, I mean those those parameters there, basically you are just representing it as a vector. Yes. yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So the I reason. Have a question, if we if you don't mind, uh, before we go ahead from the Taylor series. Mm -hmm. So usually, let's say if uh, we have third dimension. Uh, mm -hmm. yeah, I mean, if if we are dealing with say three dimensional. Uh, yeah. point. Then, in that case, the third uh, element in the Taylor series will that be a third third uh, derivative? Like, I can see a pattern uh, where the there is f of x, then there is a gradient of f of x. Huh? Will it be like the third term, which will be I, I suppose that will be eta square into Something right, like the third okay, time. So you are talking about here, is it? Yes, yes. See here, here it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what the what the what the what the dimension of the vector is. Okay, here this basically means we we, we just we just went up to the went went up to this single uh, that is like uh, that is that that is single derivative only. Okay, single gradient only. Okay, we we, we did not we did not look at the we, we did not look at the second order derivative. Okay, so this, this d transpose gradient f of x, this d d it can be three dimensions. That is, it can be it can be x one x two x three, or it can be x one x two x three x four. Doesn't matter. Okay, so here, here just like just like we are choosing f of x plus eta d of dash of x, we are choosing a eta d transpose gradient f of x. Okay. okay. So this this higher higher order it's going to be it's going to be complex, okay. It's it's not going to be it's not going to be straightforward like this. This is going to be formula obviously, okay. So it doesn't matter it doesn't matter what the what the dimension of the vector is. You could still be getting the could still be getting the higher order here, even here too. Just like just like you got it here, even here too here too, here actually there is the dimension for x is only one, right? 
but still you want the higher orders. The higher orders does not depend upon the vector. It depends upon the number of derivatives you are doing. Okay. Okay, and I I think as uh, it goes ahead, like the third fourth term, I think it will be negligible, right? The yeah 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 yeah. So it depends upon the eta d, but then if if you if you choose if you choose like uh, higher half, if you choose less eta d, right? If you right. eta d is small, then then that's going to be like negligible. Okay, thank you. Okay. Clear? Yes. Okay. okay. So the the reason the reason why we are exactly choosing this choosing choosing minus minus tail f of x or or, or, or minus f dash of x is we will discuss that in a bit. Let's say like we have here gradient, okay? We have we have gradient gradient that gradient gradient is a vector, right? The gradient is a vector because you have two by two x one and two by two x two and two by two x is something like that. So basically, it is a vector, okay? So and then. And then you are talking about some other vector d, d transpose del f of x. That's nothing but the dot product of two vectors. Okay, d transpose del f of x is going to be dot product of two vectors. And then what can you say about the dot product of two vectors? When will it be minimum and when will it be maximum? It will be maximum if the angle between those two vectors is less. Okay, right. When I mean by angle, what I mean is. I have a vector vector w, and then I have a vector d. Let's say okay, d. Okay, so the dot product between d dot w, which is nothing but d transpose w, it will be it will be like it will be more when the theta when this theta is less. Okay, as as the theta decreases, as the theta decreases. Okay, so d transpose w or d dot w increases. Okay. So, but but as a, as a theta as a theta increases, this this theta plus w will be decreasing. Okay. So, when when the when the angle between those two them it will if it is zero, if it is zero that is they are like exactly parallel. Okay. Then then the theta plus w it will be like maximum. But but if the angle between them is like is like greater than ninety, if they are like greater than ninety, then then it's going to be negative. Okay. Then, then the d transpose w, since the angle is like greater than 90, then it's going to be negative. The d transpose w will be, will be negative, and then it's going to be maximum when it's going to be maximum when this theta when the, when the theta is like 180. That is, if they're like exactly anti-parallel, right? Then, then the then the d transpose the uh, d transpose gradient f of x or d dot uh, d dot gradient f of x, okay? It's going to be the least least value. That is the reason. We have chosen this minus gradient f of x. Okay, it is like it is like exactly exactly opposite to the gradient f of x. So the dot product between these two vectors, it's going to be the minimum. Okay, that is the reason we will be chosen. We will be choosing this. Okay, so that's all we have from B K. Yes, yes, Bobby. Um, sir, I had uh, an issue in practice assignment six, question thirteen. Like, I wasn't able, I wasn't getting the correct answer for the SVD. So, if we could discuss this, uh, discuss that question today, or maybe in the next session, that would be much appreciated. Okay, which one? Question number. Last question, question thirteen, practice assignment six. Week six, right? Yes, sir. Sir, we only left with week seven now. Concept. No, we we did not discuss week seven. So so the week seven week seven concept we will discuss tomorrow. What's the week seven end? Week seven and then and then the remaining part of week six it will be discussed okay. tomorrow. Okay, okay, okay. Doctor, third in right? Question number third. Yes, sir. This question. Okay, you are not able to do this. Am I correct? Yes, sir. I got the uh, <laughs> matrix. I got the sigma matrix, but I wasn't able to get the other two. So, can you quickly mention the steps as well, like for this SVD? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah steps. Yeah, yeah. I just mentioned that. So you could see here the eigenvectors of A transpose will go into Q1. Right. Okay. So here, this particular problem, what you have, you have here. Two zero one two right. 
a equals to two zero one two. Okay, a transpose it's going to be two zero one two multiplied by two one zero two, right? If you do this, you are going to get four. Correct, and then four and then two plus it's going to be two. And then this is going to be two two. And then this is going to be plus five. Five, right? Four two two five. Okay, four two two five. Now, now we need to be finding the eigenvalues for this. Correct. So it's going to be lambda minus four. Sir, sir, here, 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 it is like a transpose or a transpose, eh? Which going to be same? Yeah. Okay. In, in this particular, in this particular case, I am doing a transpose. Okay. Ah. Okay. Okay. So, but then the eigenvalue is going to be same. Okay. Lambda minus four into lambda minus five minus four it will be equal to zero, which will give you lambda square minus nine lambda plus five cos twenty minus four is equal to zero. Lambda square minus nine lambda plus sixteen is equal to zero. Okay, um, then you are going to get six. Eight two zero sixteen four four sixteen four four sixteen. You will not get the real rules. No, you will. Nine plus minus under root seventeen divided by two. Those are both the values of number. Then I got the same. Nine plus or minus root seventeen divided by two. Root seventeen divided by two. Okay, so these are the roots, right? Now, okay, yes, cross check here, and then let's do the square root of this. That is, I mean. What is what is nine plus root seventeen by two? Root seventeen is four point one two three. It's four point one two three. No no. no. Is... Seven. Root seventeen. Root seventeen is root four point one two three. Root seventeen is four point one two three. Yes. Okay. Um. This nine plus four is going to go. Thirteen point one. Thirteen divided by two. Six point six something. It will keep coming. Point five six. Point five six one. What about the square root of that? Square root of six point five six. Two point five six roughly. Two point five six. Two point five six. So two point five six. Okay, you got this. You got the value. Okay. So at least you got it. And then you do the opposite. That is nine minus four point one two three. That's going to be something like four point eight something, right? Four point eight something divided by two. Think like two point four square root, correct? Two point four. Just short of five. One point five six. Okay, one five something. Okay, actually, we we got this. We got the simple values correct. Okay. So someone was saying that. Uh, uh, sir, this single single values are are a transpose a right in the lecture. A transpose. And someone, uh, someone was telling that, so was mentioning that uh, we should be looking for a transpose a. No, sir. I was doing for a transpose a. Then I got the matrix as phi two two four. Okay. But, okay. but still, the eigenvalues are the same. Yes. Yes. As I told, as I told, the the singular values, the eigenvalues of a transpose and a transpose a, it's going to be the same. Hmm. Okay. Okay, so now now that now that we got the eigenvalues, from that we need to be looking at the eigenvectors. Okay, so this way you can do that is okay. here you have four two two five right? Four two two five multiply minus uh, that nine plus. Root seventeen by two, zero zero nine. Two point five six. One point five six. Okay, you want two point five six. And one point five six. This is two point five six. More yes, sir. Yes. Six point right. So two point five six. No, no, it's root of root of six point five six is one point five six. We don't want the root here. We just want the. Okay. Okay. We just want to six point. Okay. Okay. So this is going to be. Let me just show this as six point five six. 
and the square six point five six. Okay. This overall multiplied by. Yeah, both oh, are both are not six point. Equal zero. Huh? So sir, one is one point five six and one is six point five six. No, okay, okay, sir, you are right, you are right. Yeah, yeah. Left down. Okay, 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 sir. Okay, sorry, sir. So this you are going to get minus two point five six two two and then minus one point five six multiplied by x one x two, which should be equal to zero, right? Yes, sir. So uh, let's assume this x one to be one. Okay, so minus two point five six. Plus x two plus two x two plus two x two is equal to zero plus x two is equal to one point zero point seven eight. What's going to this value? One point minus one point two eight. No, it'll be one point one point two eight. Huh? One point one point two eight. No. One point two eight. One point two eight. So. Your your first value is your first factor is one one point two eight. Okay, so this this is minus minus one point. No, no, it's going to be plus. No, no. Okay, right, right, right. One plus. Yeah. One so plus. I'm taking assuming the value of x one to be zero. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
स्क्वेर प्लस पॉइंट एट स्क्वेर अंडर रूट कैन समन डेल में दिस वैल्यू इज प्लस सर इट वर्क्स आउट टू बी रफली द नॉर्मलाइजेशन ऑफ 1 एंड 1.28 इज रफली अराउंड 1.6 Okay, so this this length it's going to be equal to one point six, is it? One point six two four. One point six two four. So one divided by one point six two four, and then one point two eight divided by one point six two four. That's your first vector, and then the second one will be one divided by what is this one? One point six four square root one sixty four square root. It you are going to get somewhere around one point three, I guess. Two eight zero. 1.28 right 1 divided by 1.28 and then minus 0.8 divided by 1.28 okay this is your this is your first vector i mean the first the the, the first uh, this q1 okay mm -hmm. what you call what you call right now is this q1 so 1 divided by 1.64 and then 1.28 divided by 1.64 so it will either be this uh, first option or third option Okay, so just check that. All right, just check that. You'll be able to get it. So I have a question, sir. Sir, yeah. you uh, assume that x one is one. So it uh, did we on on what well, logical one ba what base the x one is you are assuming one. No, no, no. You you, you could be take. You, okay, if you take x one as zero, then x two will also be zero. You you can't be taking x one as zero, but then you can be taking any any value other than zero. Okay. 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 You can take any value other than zero, but not to zero. Okay. Okay. We we I can take also two hundred something. Huh? Yeah. 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 You can take anything. So actually, in this particular case, you could see here, for for our particular case, now the first vector turns out to be okay. Ah. Huh. One by one point six two four. I guess that is equal to point six four four. Okay. But then you look at for us the second one. Our first value is one by one point two eight, right? Then the second value is minus point eight by one one by one point two eight, right? Uh, so you could see here, but then the this 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 first value is coming out as negative. Mm -hmm. For us, for us the second value is coming out as negative. Mm -hmm. So this is to multiply it by minus one. Okay. okay. Even even that is also a that is also equal vector, right? So mm -hmm. based on the options, based on the options, you should be selecting the correct one. Okay. Okay, sir. But uh one question i have how about so i don't think to... hello yeah can i uh, sure go ahead can i yeah thank you yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, how are we relating it to 0.645 because it is 1 by 1.128 or how are we going about with that this 0.645 uh -huh. how are we relating it uh -huh. 1 by 1.624 and then and then this one right okay 1 by 1.624 is somewhere around 0.645 right but it it's coming out to be 0.615 So it's not matching. No. I mean, see, it's not exactly matching because because we 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 actually general. I mean, we rounded it off. Okay. Even yeah. the length is not one. What? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The length is not one because we rounded it off. If we did not rounded it off, if we if we if we took it like until like three decimal place or something, then you'll be getting very close to it. Okay. Bigger. Yes, sir. But like uh, here, if you only use one point, the value that we have calculated, it it is coming much closer. Like the, this, uh, one value is zero point seven something, another is zero point six one six something. So there is a lot of difference here. Like it's not even close. Okay. See, the thing is, that's what I told. If you if you, if you want to be, if you want to having having the exact value, right? Then what is this nine plus root seventeen? What is the root seventeen value? Can someone tell me? Four point one two three, and then this one, right? You should be, you should be choosing the exact values. You should be choosing, you should be choosing more precision values. If you choose more precision values, then you'll be getting it more correctly. That's so. Yes, sir. The the more correct thing is like uh, the one given in the graded assignment is like yeah, yeah, approximate. Yeah, yeah. The, the, the one, the one given in the graded assignment, that's the more correct one. Sir, in 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 sir uh, quiz two, sir, this much of complex problem will also come. No, no, this, this much of complex problem will not be getting. Will not be getting the eigenvalues as this uh, this kind. Of, okay. Okay, okay, it is okay. Uh, Calculatively, so it it will be uh, the SVD will be there, but the calculation it will be easy. Yeah, yeah. 
सर इन हाउस सर कह नो इज कंप्यूटेशन ऑफ एसबीटी इज मच इन्वॉल्व प्रोसेस सो मेनी स्टेप्स आर इन्वॉल्व या सर इन द लेक्चर देयर वाज अनदर वे शोन व्हिच वाज कंप्यूटिंग एक्स डिवाइडेड बाय सिंगुलर वैल्यू या या सो बेसिकली इफ यू यू नो यू नो वन वन राइट देन देन यू कैन फाइंड द अदर वेक्टर्स दैट इज इफ यू हैव अ कंप्यूटर फॉर दिस ए ट्रांसपोज यू कैन फाइंड द अदर वंस और और वाइस वर्स या यू कैन यूज दैट वन टू which one is computationally more effective uh, according to you like it's not like effective both are both are exactly the same okay so okay. The, the the one the one which which sir has mentioned that involves less steps so it can be used in that so 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 the efficient one which will take less time yeah yeah the efficient one is is the one which takes less time yeah which one sir the one the one which professor has mentioned okay okay Uh, sir, I have a doubt related to week eight, sir. I think week eight in tutorial we have covered a Newton's method also, right? No, that will not be there. That will not okay. be there. Okay, okay, great. Yeah. Okay, so sir, I think there was a question in the mock based on Newton's method. Okay, so even if it is there in the mock grade, it will not be there in the final exam. Okay. No, like sir, so, sir, for the final, we just supposed to know the gradient method and the iterate and the iterations it takes. Can I repeat? You want me to post what? Uh, sir, for the mock, we just suppose for the exam for the quiz two, we are supposed to know the iterative gradient method, right? The yes. gradient descent. Yeah, not just that. You, you need to know like how to how to find this objective function. That is one. Uh -huh. Yeah, right, sir. Uh, how to how to generally find the how to generally minimize it or maximize a particular thing like minimizing this square one, all the all the stuff where I I told you right. Maximizing the volume that can be inscribed in a square, something like that. Okay, those are right, basic. Right, I got it. Okay. Yeah, if if you know that alone, that's going to be sufficient for week eight. Okay. Right, I got it. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. So if there are no other questions, then we can close session. Okay. And we'll try to have more session on Saturday. And tomorrow timing also, sir. Uh, please update the calendar accordingly, sir. Yeah, that also will be great. Okay, sir. Thank you. Um, I have missed <laughs> because of some. Uh, I had a call for about one hour in between. I'll go through the video and if I have a doubt, can I reach out to you? Yes, yes, you can reach out to me. So we'll be having a session on like this Saturday. Okay, one more session regarding mock. There you can okay. ask me, or else uh, you can reach out okay. to me. The email ID or something. Yes, two zero zero four. Sorry, sorry. Mail. You can reach out to CS two zero zero four mail. CS two zero zero four. Okay. Yeah, we have uh, any email. If you can type in there, I will be uh, happy yeah, to yeah. answer. Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll I'll try to contact you. Okay. So yeah. I'll, uh, I'll... Um, uh, sorry, I I do not, I do not have that CS two zero zero four mail. Uh, or rather, I don't know where exactly it is. Can you tell me where I can pick it from? That, that is just the mail. CS two zero zero four. At the rate online entry dot iitm dot is dot cs two zero zero four. Just remember that, okay. and then at the rate online entry dot iitm dot is dot. That's all. Okay. Online degree. Okay. Yeah. Why okay. Got it. Got it. Got it. Thank you. Thank you very much, Bhavya. Yeah. Excuse me, sir. Uh, in PCA, while constructing, uh, while evaluating reconstruction error, the PCA will be discussed tomorrow. 